Hello everybody, it's Miss Wilmot here. Do you remember me? I hope you're well today. Um, I think it's Thursday and I hope that you're keeping busy during this really strange time. I'm trying to. I'm clearly not cutting my own hair yet, but I'm cooking for my dad and my uncle. Um, they can't go out and I'm lucky enough to live by the seafront so I can go for a walk every day. I'm also hoping that I will soon hear from a dog walking charity because I've signed up to walk dogs for people who can't go out. I hope I don't get a two hour, but we'll see. Miss Wills has invited you into my kitchen today so that I can share with you some of the things that I've been thinking about over the last couple of weeks. Now, I've written them down and they're in front of me, so I do apologise if I look at my book or flick over the pages, but I haven't got autocue in the kitchen. Throughout this time, I've been listening to the news, to the radio, to telephone conversations and thinking about the language of lockdown. And I've been wondering about all these words that have become part of our everyday language when perhaps we would never really heard of them before or used them very often before. Can you think of any? I asked my friends and family to WhatsApp me their favourite lockdown words. And their replies were quite interesting. One friend said self-isolating, social distancing, pandemic, stockpiling, shielded and vulnerable. I think perhaps I ought to give her a call. Rylan from the telly, not my real friend, he said unprecedented, a word that we hear over and over again and rarely heard used before. Think about that one. My cousin is a midwife and for her, the words are all about keeping her patients, their babies and herself safe. She sent words like face mask, personal protective equipment, ventilator, sanitizer. She also took the chance to say, stay at home, protect the NHS, save lives. Words that we will probably never forget. To be honest, I did start to wish I hadn't asked. These words all sound quite worrying, a bit scary. And then I had a text from my nephew, who's nine, and I realised that I need not worry or be scared because his words filled me with hope. He'd chosen them carefully to impress his auntie. But what do you think? Volunteers, NHS heroes, rainbows, kindness, family, neighbours, clapping. In this strange time, parents have become teachers and teachers have gone online to share words and ideas with their students. One teacher called Ms Whitton shared a great PowerPoint on Facebook and it makes me want to ask you, what will be your language of lockdown? Do you feel stuck at home or safe at home? Is this time boring or are you actually part of history? Do you look up at the pink moon in the unpolluted sky and treasure one walk a day? Have you finally realised the power of a hug? Think about your lockdown words and perhaps even write them down. Shakespeare wrote some of his greatest plays when confined during the Great Plague. What could you write? A postcard? A diary? A poem? A letter to the future? Or you could just write a sign to go in your window to say hello to someone who is lonely. Keep going to those who have to. Or thank you to those who are keeping us safe. Remember, when this is over, you are still the future. And I know that you will choose your words carefully. Take care. I look forward to seeing you all again sometime soon. But in the meantime, don't judge me on my kitchen. It took ages to decide where to sit. Good luck.